working on this Chrysler 105 with Magna Power ignition. It has the uh, Motorola ignition system on it, the CD box. And inside the distributor, it has an optical pickup. And if some of you car guys are familiar with uh, Mallory Unilites, it, they look very similar to that inside. In fact, I'm kind of wondering if this thing failed, if I could not replace that module in there, which are stupendously expensive, if you could get them still. Um, with a, a Mallory unit with a little bit of drilling and tapping and shimming and you know Anyway, okay, here's the uh, here's how you need to have it set, set up You have to do this with the switch on so you want to make darn sure the motor doesn't start because your hands are going to be up on the flywheel so I have a clip have the have the uh, Secondary disconnected from the coil and I've got a clip lead in here and a clip lead is on ground one general word of caution particularly with any kind of uh, high voltage ignition system. You must ground the coil on the spark side or if you're working over here on one cylinder or more cylinders, whichever one you have off the spark plug you need to have grounded. The reason that is is because if you let this leave this into an open circuit the voltage in the coil will surge to a very high point where it will damage the uh, the insulation in the coil. Now the big car coils with the oil filled they can tolerate that much more so than these little plastic ones can. Uh, this is the original one. The box is not original inside, but that's a different another video on that. I won't get into that now. So uh, and and the multiple packs, those small coils on, on engines that have multiple coils here, you know, one for one per plug, ground those things. Don't leave them free. Also, you keep from hurting yourself. All right, enough of that. So you, you have to go through your, your adjustments uh, like you normally would. The, uh, right at the moment, the throttle has to be all the way, is all the way forward. It has to be all the way forward to the stop touches the block. Uh, you should have already gone through and adjusted your throttle linkage. So in this position, the blades are wide open and this is the idle screw. So all of that, you should already do that. Um, not that that's gonna affect the timing really uh, in this instance, but uh, you know, you want your best performance out of the thing. This one, uh, this engine had been uh, gone into back in the middle 80s by one of the local marinas, which is now out of business. Gee, I wonder if that could be anywhere near related. And one thing I've, I noticed when I got into this thing that, that uh, the throttle butterflies in the wide open throttle position only went open about halfway. And of course, in the course of cleaning the carburetors out, the uh, float levels were set way wacky doodle off, too low. Can't really get anything to idle well like that. All right, so I'm gonna climb up on my bucket. And one other thing that has to be set right is the tension of this drive belt. And now the book says, 006, an 006 feeler gauge, when you press in on the belt till it deflects that's one pound of force, and you should have a quarter of an inch of deflection. Uh, don't, these belts don't run tight. They run just barely with the slack out of them. This is the pivot bolt, and over here on the other side, hiding back there, is, is the bolt that swings on. So you loosen those up and tap it gently until you get the right clearance. All right, so over here, I'm showing 13 volts. Uh, this blue terminal is the always on 12 and the other one is the signal from the trigger unit so what I want to do and this is going to be a trick doing this one-handed is to turn this thing and you see why you don't want it any way possible for the thing to come on when you're doing doing this so I'm going to turn this thing until this voltage jumps You know, I do believe the trigger unit's going bad in this thing. Oops. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And then move it forward. See, I'm just barely creeping it. Move it forward until it drops. And that means the plugs have fired. Whoa, right there. 
Now, I should be able to touch the sides of the belt. See, I'm touching one side of the belt and I'm touching the other side of the belt and it might be turning the pulley one degree, if, it, if any, if that much. And if you look over here, you see where the voltage is going to zero and I touch one side and three the other side. So we know we're sitting right dead on, and that, I actually got that rather quickly. Uh, we know we're sitting right dead on the timing. But if you look over here, and I expected this because this link right here doesn't have enough gap. It should be more than that. I think the, I think the, the factory setting is actually 5 eighths. We look over here, 36 is way over there, and the timing tab's over here. So it should be, that's where 36 is, and this is where the timing tab is. So the end of the timing tab is minus 4. So if 36 was sitting here on minus 4, I would have, um, the timing would be on. So that would be 32 degrees. So it's way to heck off. Surprise, surprise. Okay, I'm going to knock the video off now, and I'm going to figure out why that is and give it a tweak. Probably can get this thing idling a little smoother because of this, because it means the timing is also way off at idle from what it should be, although that's not quite as critical. Um, and when I get it figured out and get it adjusted, I'll be back.